How does it make you feel? It's so good now. It's lovely for him. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your support. At the Hanamein International Market in Hamtramck, Michigan, the new mayor is greeted by voters and by friends. So, Ramdan was one of the very active uh, supporters in my campaign. Ahmed Ghalib is a regular customer and a medical professional at a nearby clinic. Yeah, come. <laughs> and now, he's also the face of this immigrant-run enclave. I am originally from Yemen. I was in my high school, 11th grade, when I came to uh, the United States. I was asked by one of the teachers, what do you want to be? And I, I told him I want to be a politician. And, and he told me, you are too smart, you, you need to do something else. Because I, I used to have good math skills and science. And that's why I went for medicine, but I love politics a long time ago. I mean, so now here we go, I'm going back to serving them from a different aspect. This is Hamtramck, a five and a half square kilometer city with a population of nearly 30,000. It's almost entirely surrounded by Metro Detroit in the Midwestern U.S. state of Michigan. It's a unique city. Uh, the food, diversity, you know, different cultures. Um, you see people speaking different languages, different religions. Uh, so you, you will enjoy the diversity. That's the, the best thing in this city. That diversity has helped make history in Hamtramck, which has not only elected a Muslim mayor, but also ushered in an all-Muslim city council, a first for America. And like the city itself, most of the elected representatives were born outside of the United States. Hamtramck, it's, I call it a little uh, United Nations. Even though the entire council and mayor are Muslims, in the end we're still Americans, and we will follow the constitution of this, you know, uh, of this great nation. It doesn't matter if uh, we're Muslims or Christians or Jews. For decades, Hamtramck was known as Michigan's Little Warsaw. And for almost a century after its incorporation, every mayor of the city has been Polish-American. This city used to be dominated by Polish immigrants, a history depicted here in Pope Park. But while their businesses remain cornerstones of the community, the Polish-American population is estimated to have dwindled to below 15 percent. Originally, we, we were French were here, then the German uh, population came here and was here for a century. And then the Poles started coming in, Polish immigrants started coming in in 1910. Greg Kowalski has been curating Hamtramck's history for decades. He's watched the city transform as Yemeni and Bangladeshi immigrants began moving in for jobs in the auto industry in the 1970s and 80s. That influx of new immigrants from different places is continuing even more today than it did back then. Anytime you have change, you're going to have friction. There's going to be differences, there's going to be misunderstandings about between different cultures or among different cultures and different people. Uh, we haven't seen a great deal here, though. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the uh, misunderstandings that you hear about are not really the people here feuding or fighting with each other or disagreeing with each other. It's people from outside the community who are uh, voicing their opinions about what's happening here. That includes questioning whether the new mayor can carry out his role. During my campaign, I received those uh messages from some people who are afraid, uncertain about our leadership and about the future of the city because it's a major change, a first Muslim mayor. And, and so some of them, they think uh, that we may come and just dominate, which that's not the goal. given day, the call to prayer is heard from a dozen mosques here, a very rare experience in the U.S. where fewer than a handful of cities are given an exemption from the local noise ordinance. Of course, this plays an example. We have a good racial harmony, and we are living together. We are doing whatever we can without any interruption. 
At this mosque in Hamtramck, Bangladeshi worshippers welcome the new makeup of their city council, but insist that it remains an American city that affords them their freedoms. People say it is Muslim city, but I don't believe that. I said, is Muslim majority people live here, but it's not Muslim city. You know, thanks God that in America we can do what we used to do in our country. There was an issue about, you know, the mosque doing the call to prayer, and there was a great uproar among some people. Well, there were a few people, you know, locally who objected to the call to prayer because it was so loud, but most of the criticism of it came from people who didn't live here. They came from uh, people in the outlying communities, or former Hamtramckans, who always want Hamtramck to be the way it used to be and they don't want it to change. Well, you, you, that doesn't work that way. Everything changes. In many ways, Hamtramck is just like any other American city. The Christmas season is in full swing at this uniquely Polish gift shop. Its owner has been in Hamtramck for nearly five decades. It's been changing ever since I've been here. It's amazing. In the homes of the school children here, we have over 20 different languages spoken, so we are diverse. This is not something unusual. We make it work. Neighbors are neighbors and they uh, get along. I'm now, I guess, the minority, um, which is interesting to think about. Uh, but for the most part, I get along with uh, all my neighbors. It doesn't matter if they're Bangladeshi, Yemeni, they've all been really friendly to me. It brings a lot of attention because everyone else thinks it's odd. But we, our neighbors are all Muslim, Yemeni, Bosnian. We've had, we've went, we've gone to school with kids for lots of years. I think as a community, Camp Tramic has always embraced different nationalities and immigrants and um, people that come to the community, and it's kind of been an uh, easy transition. It wasn't always that way. Ghalib's election came just two months after the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. In its aftermath came the government surveillance and entrapment of Muslims in America, and fear was rampant. Well, I remember 9-11, I was I started college at that time, and uh, I was new in this country and it felt uh, uh, horrible. I mean, we felt insecure, afraid um, about, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, the, the, the country moved forward now. They know who is the enemy. We all know. I mean, and we, are, we are fighting the stereotyping and all, all these uh, xenophobia and bigotry and all this stuff that may affect us negatively but now we feel like we are part of the American um, culture now which is there is no one culture America is, is made of different cultures and that's the beauty of America diverse uh, country there are now three Muslim mayors in the Detroit area in Hamtramck in Dearborn Heights and in Dearborn all signaling a shift in the way Muslim Americans partake in political life. In Dearborn, um, I consider myself an ac activist and community advocate. And what um, really like triggered my activism is in 2016 election. Misha Asi has been a U.S. citizen for more than 13 years, but never cast a ballot until then-presidential candidate Donald Trump pledged a ban on Muslims entering the country. If we want to compare um, the post 9-11 to the 2016 presidential election when it comes to Muslim involvement in political life, I can consider the post 9-11 like sort of like that caused like an emotional reaction for Muslims. But then the Trump election and rhetoric of hate and Muslim ban, this was like more sort of proact proactive uh, stage where, when Muslim realized their voice matter. Dearborn, a Detroit suburb, has long been known as America's Arab capital. About half of its 100,000 residents are Arab, and most identify as Muslim. 
It now has both a Muslim mayor and a Muslim chief of police. You have here like the Muslim voters making an impact because you know this this type type of energy and uh, uh, movement it's it contagious. A lot of like imams at the mosque they uh, ensured like they did invite a lot of candidates, not only Muslim candidates, even non-Muslim candidates. They invite them and uh, to the uh, to the mosque and provided a platform for them to encourage people to vote. Politics took a backseat to economic success among immigrants arriving here. Muslim Americans have notably revitalized commerce in the Detroit suburbs. There was not that many uh, businesses here in Dearborn, and when the you know the Muslims and you know mainly Middle Easterns came here, a lot of us from the Middle East we have the mindset of being an entrepreneur, owning our own thing, bringing in our idea. So this is what made the city great. All of these things have a calming effect on a community because they, they give it a sense of cohesion. Uh, and uh, it's more comforting. You feel safer when you see kids playing, when there you see people walking their dogs in the evening or in the early morning, all of these factors. And uh, it's, it's even affected the surrounding neighborhoods. The contributions of newcomers is why Hamtramck's mayor wants to keep his own personal journey front and center. I will keep talking about my story as an immigrant and uh, how it was uh, uh, successful and inspiring to other people.